Hey guys, today I'm going to tell you another story of uh, using my rent money to buy a magic collection which I needed to flip two days later to again pay my rent. Uh, this happened in grad school. I drove all the way to Norfolk to pick up a collection. The collection had many dual lands including I, a place of tundras. That's why I vividly remember. Um, and part of the deal was I had to pay cash and stuff but my bank account was a little empty because I didn't get my stipend from the grad school yet and just very to summarize the story I need to get rid of it I need to buy this collection and get rid of it in two days now it was really difficult to do because the store that I played at the groovy geckos didn't really buy large collections they didn't buy any collections because they were always bankrupting so they didn't really have money to buy anything I remember um, it's bankrupt four or five times one time they didn't even have electricity, so I was like, oh, well, I, they're probably not going to buy the cards. So I lived in an area which is a really small town and there's no one there locally who will buy cards, but this collection was so good. And had a place at Force Wells and a place at Tundras and then some random dual lands uh, back before they were expensive. So again, this is not dual lands like today. This is dual lands like six years ago where they were not expensive as expensive as they are today. So I'm going to um, pick up this collection. You know, I, I, I go to the bank, I realize I don't have any money. So I, I thought I had more money in the bank than I actually did, but I didn't have more money in the bank. So I took the rest of my money, paid for this collection, and it was like, holy crap, I gotta get rid of it. Um, so then I drove to Richmond, which is one of the largest cities around where I live, where I used to live. And then I was trying to sell the collection to one of the largest stores in Richmond. Uh, they wouldn't take it because some of the conditioning, there was conditioning issues and there was, um, so they, they never take bulk. But I expected them to take the tundras, the force of whales, and I feel like there was a few wastelands and other dual lands and in that way I could pay for rent and still have the extra cards in my collection. But they didn't take them. And that was the largest store in Richmond that was kind of a, a waste of a drive. I, in hindsight, I should have called, you know, to see if they did it or a waste of time. So I was like, okay, I'll do Magic Online Trading League. Uh, but Magic Online Trading League, there's no way you get that money that fast unless you are very trusted and they're going to send the money first instantaneously and they're going to trust the conditions and yet get the scans in and um, a whole process, right? But at that time, I didn't have a very strong Magic Online Trading Magic Online Trading League account. Wow, it sound, sounds so weird for me to say that because that website really does not have any activity anymore. Um, but... Um, I didn't have a very big account. I eventually did have a very large account, but that wasn't the time. So I had this collection and I had rent due and there wasn't really anything I could do except go to the rent office. Um, and they were really nice. They were extremely nice. And tell them, hey, you know, I need some more time on the rent. So they gave me two extra days. And those two extra days, essentially there was this buyer in Europe for dual lands. And I knew him very well because I sent him all my dual lands. At the time, Europe dual lands were much higher priced than the U.S., so they were, I guess the euro exchange ratio was very good. Or there was some reason that the I, every single dual land I've ever shipped from Magic Online Trading League was from to Europe. So he was like, all right, I for, I'll give you the money. Uh, he deposited the money overnight. Um, he trusted me because we were working on a ton of deals, and then I sent him the cards the next day. So long story short, the only reason I did it was because the profit margin on this collection was immense. So I said I paid for the whatever I paid for it and just the dual lands. I got to keep the force of whales, the wastelands, the um, I believe there was a ton of uh, just random soul rings and uh, this was before EDH was EDH. So this collection at the time was maybe like what I made was like $400, $500. Um, after you know, I recouped the initial investment, but that was right before EDH, before the Commander decks, before Magic. So EDH was around, but it wasn't a true format in my opinion until Magic actually published the first Commander doc decks that summer. Um, and I remember that summer vividly because I remember seeing all these Commander decks. And I was like, oh wow, like what? What is this format? And that was the first time I saw it. But all those cards in that collection spiked like crazy. Um, and that was probably the biggest risk I ever took on a collection. Given, you know, hey, I could be kicked out or... <laughs> but 
but I knew what it was. I knew what it was worth. And that, that was the asking price from the guy. And I said, you know, I'm going to give you exactly what you want. I knew I could get rid of the dual lands and make about the same as rent, break even on rent. And I knew that the rest of the collection would be build a collection. And that was my collection. And the backstory behind why I needed that collection so badly was I sold my magic, uh, my own magic collection with the foil chromas. The only card that I kept was the beta dragon and my first boost, boost pack of beta, which is had the Northern Paladin and a few swamps and stuff like that. The karma and things like that. But that was my biggest, uh, that was my best magic decision because that whole collection pretty much overnight just skyrocketed in price after EDH really took up took off as a format that summer. Anyway, that's a good story. Bye. If you guys have a similar story, leave a comment below. Anyway, bye guys.